morning, good morning, good morning. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. God is worthy on today. He's worthy of the praise and he's worthy of the honor and he is worthy of all the glory. There's nobody like our God. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise. Oh, God, touch all those who are watching. 
watching via social media, on whichever platform, God. Oh God, that you will touch the needs of the people on today, oh God. That someone will cry out, what must I do to be saved? Oh God, let us be the church that you are looking for in this last day, oh God. Oh God, we look up this nation to you, oh God. We look up the leaders, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Continue to have your way, for this is our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let all God's people say amen, amen, and amen. We will now have our praise team come forth to sing our opening selection. Oh, magnify the Lord. Amen.
in prayer, that you'll enjoy the work, worship services here at the Grove. Our announcements are the theme for Oak Grove NBC Apex this year is the year of divine recovery. Amen. The year of divine recovery. To our Oak Grove family partners and those who are joining us each week via social media, our church is having a 21-day fast. It began on January 11th, and it will conclude on Sunday, January 31st. We will be fasting from 12 to 3 p.m. each day. If you're able to go longer, bless the Lord. Our virtual hour of power is each Wednesday at 7, 7 p.m. And you can join via Zoom, Facebook Live, or our church website, which is www.oakgrovenbcapex.org. If you need prayer or you're looking for a church home, please do not hesitate to contact us. We will now have our morning offering. If you would like to sow a seed into the ministry, the information is located on our Facebook, YouTube, and church website. On our church website, you can just click on the tab, I believe it says, Giving. Amen. And after our offering, the praise team will come back with another selection. And thereafter, the next voice you will hear is that of our pastor, Elder Jamar Cole. God has been Amen. good. Let me get a hand clap of praise. If you're happy, you will clap your hands. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. If you're happy, you will clap your hands. Amen. God has been good. All right. Yeah, that's a Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Be honored, Lord, for our being and certainly to our members, who is doing a phenomenal job of uh, presiding for our uh, worship experience, and we thank God for her. We, we stand to make an offertory appeal, of course, to all our overall disciples. Let me first say uh, that we are in our uh, holy, I say holy complication, we're in our uh, time of consecration and fasting, so we ask as our member Sims has stated for you to go, if you go from 12 plus, uh, three, then do so, but at least from 12 to 3 each day, uh, certainly if you need further instruction. Some people don't know uh, how to fast, and certainly we are not ignorant of that. Uh, if you desire more information concerning that, please email our church, and we will um, give you instructions, amen, as to what you need to do. Fasting is important, but it's also serious business. Uh, if you don't believe it, ask Jesus. After he had fasted, then he was tempted of the devil. Amen. And that's what happens when you fast. You don't realize that you are going into spiritual warfare. Amen. And you can expect some stuff to start coming your way. But the Lord has already strengthened the inner man. Okay. And he's already strengthened the inner man that you may go through with him. And certainly we, uh, we say to all our disciples, be diligent in your fasting. I'm going to ask um, that you would do something. This is We don't do anything by clear uh, coincidence or something uh, because of what somebody else is doing. But this is what the Lord gave us on today. I'm going to do it tomorrow because I, I did not have opportunity to do it today. But um, I'm going to ask all our disciples that are fasting, uh, they have a idolatry, to get, go get a journal. To go get a journal. Yeah. And in this journal, now, God said we can prove him. And if we prove him, we try him, he'll prove himself. Yes. Get a journal. And if you don't have it, we'll let you know. We'll make sure that you get one. Get a journal and daily write in this journal. The prayer request that you have, what you want the Lord to do in you. Amen. There's no need for us to ask God for houses and land if we don't know how to act. Amen. In the apartment that we have right now. Somebody else say amen. amen. And then we ask God for mansions and we can't even keep what we got clean. Amen. So God ain't going to bless you with more unless you be faithful over a few things first. Amen. So that being stated, every disciple and covenant partner, we invite you to get a journal and to write in it daily. And then at night, amen, that you would pray over that which you have did. And I guarantee you, I don't know what God is going to do. I don't know how he's going to do it. But come the 31st. I know we'll hear some praise reports. Amen. Because God is just in the blessing business. Amen. This is year 20. Yeah, amen. Somebody say amen. 
Amen. This is 2021, and so we're going on 21 days of consecration and fasting. Amen. We ask that you would, uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, get a journal and write as much as you possibly can that and lift it up before the Lord. Amen. Go as long as you possibly can, but if you would start at 12, amen, and at least try to go to 3. If you cannot, we definitely understand because there are some that have uh, things that they need to do, such as health concerns um, and things of that nature. Uh, but with that being stated, I want to uh, stand here. Uh, we offered an offertory appeal uh, on last Sunday, and uh, we started offering off. And I want you to know that this ain't, I've been stimulated like most of us. Um, what are you talking about? I've got my, you know, what they gave. Amen. But this is not what I'm talking about. God, what I gave on last Sunday, in less than five days, gave me almost six times what I had sold. Okay. Some still don't believe that this faith thing works. Amen. And so I had a conversation with the Lord, and I'm going to up it. Amen. I'm not going to ask you to do something uh, that uh, I won't do myself. We don't give to be seen, but it's good to be seen giving. Amen. And so on, to, uh, on today, amen, uh, I'm going to, I, I know we said we're going to start off uh, or do it once a month. That's you put an offer to the side once a month. But I'm led, this is what the Lord told me, so don't do it unless the Lord has told you to do it. Amen. Amen. Uh, so with this being stated, I want to begin the offering last one. I trust these to come, those that want to participate in giving on this go-round. Amen. If you don't have it, amen, pray that the Lord will give it to you next time. Amen. But we, amen, if you be stingy, God's going to get that thing one way or another. I've learned to get more from God from releasing my hand than to keep my fist balled up. And I don't just expect for him to give me money, but the fact that I was able to get, to get up this morning, can't even look, there's no price on that. And so with that being stated, we're going to start offering that uh, one trustee can come, amen. We don't want nobody to be missed on the giving, amen, portion of it. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to start off and off with $100. And I announce it because as under shepherd of this house, I did not ask you to do something I'm not going to participate in on my own, amen. So at this time, I'm going to ask the musicians to give us something, uh, some offertory music, if you will, if that makes sense. Um, those that desire to give, it is on the screen. You may go to the website. Amen. Uh, Oak Grove, NBC, Apex. You can give on that website. Also, daily for the consecration. Amen. There are scriptures that you will read. Amen. We ask that you read uh, each day. It will be posted on Facebook, but you can also go to the website. There's a calendar that our media team has already set up, and you can literally click on each day, well, as we go, uh, and you can see what the, that reading is for that day. So at this time, we're going to allow you to give, but before we give, let us stand. We're going to bless God for this offering. Amen. That we're about to receive. Amen. I, I just, I just believe that God is just gonna do some stuff. I'm asking Him to save some folks. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm asking Him to, because I got some folks in my family that's not saved. Yes. I'm asking Him to save some folks, and I want Him to do a work in me. Yes, sir. Yes. So, okay. Yes, sir. All right. So with that being said, we're gonna bless all of this time. Father, we thank you. You have to give a very good and perfect gift, and we have because you have given unto us. Help us to be good stewards. You love a cheerful giver. So help us to give cheerfully on today, Lord. We don't want to give grudgingly, but God, we want to give cheerfully. Let this be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. And God, we say thank you because you've been good to us all day long. We say thank you. For where you brought us from and where you're taking us to. We God, we ask you to do it for your glory, for your praise, and your honor. And we thank you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Amen.
for his presence in this place on today. We thank him for permeating the atmosphere. Now we're going to ask him just to do a new thing in here. A new thing in you. And we're just saying, Jesus, come on in the house.
them holy. In chapters 1 through 11 in the book of Romans, Paul has spent considerable time telling us how to be saved and what salvation means, what we have been saved from, and what salvation has done for us. Notice, if you please, in chapter 1, verse 18, he says that the wrath of God has been poured out on sinful men. He gave them over to a reprobate mind, according to that 28th verse. In chapter 3, uh, verse 23, he says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In chapter 5, verse 1, he says to, uh, it goes to say that therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Around chapter 6, verse 1, he says that, uh, he says that what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. And in chapter 7, verse 21, he says that whenever he attempts to do the right thing, evil is always present. The good that I would do, I find myself not doing, and the evil that I don't want to do, that's what I do. Oh, wretched man that I am, who can deliver us from this body of death. In chapter 8, verse 1, he says that there is therefore now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus who no longer live lives walking after the flesh but after the spirit. Around yes, yes. verse 28, he, he says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And then we get to verse or chapter 10, verse 9, he says that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Yes, how then shall they call on them in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in them in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. For chapter 11, for chapter, uh, from chapters 1 through chapter 11, Paul has dealt with what God has done for us in redemption. But in chapters 12 through 16 are the instructions of what we should do in response to being saved in the first place. It makes no sense to have doctrine and not have the duty to perform it. And you cannot perform what you do not know. I wish somebody would help me in this house. Doctrine and duty are inescapably bound together. In other words, you really don't know what you're shouting about until you come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And it's a hard thing for you to know who Jesus is and not shout. <laughs> okay, when you know who Jesus is, then you know what you're shouting about. 1 Timothy 4 and 8 uh, says from the easy to read version, training your body helps you in some ways, but devotion to God helps you in every way. In other words, jumping up and down is good, but if you don't know who Jesus is, all you're doing is getting in a workout. Lord, oh, Paul's focus in chapter 12 shifts to some very practical and spiritual matters. He discusses many aspects of everyday life for believers. No doubt we should be on our way to heaven. But in the meantime, we have to realize that we still have a residence here on earth. I am a dual citizen. I live here on earth, but I'm on my way to heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, uh, this world is not my home. Might be yours, but this world is not my home. I'm just a stranger passing through. And that's why some walks are like, you're not accepted, you're not welcome, you're not invited to, because honey, you ain't supposed to fit in this place anyway, because this is not your final place. But I'm on my way to heaven, and I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying the trip. Uh, let me say it like this. I am in the world, but I am not of it. Uh, but because I am not of it, get this, does not give me a ticket of not having to live in it. Mm -hmm. All right? Just because I am not of the world does not mean I cannot, or I can get a ticket to not live in the world. You can't be so heavenly minded that you are no earthly good. 
but because we're in this world, we have to learn how we uh, how we to navigate from here to glory. Uh, I, and so since I'm here, I need some practical spiritual advice to help me navigate through this place called earth. We cannot become so heavenly minded and fix our eyes on Jesus that we forget about our assignment here on earth. As a believer, there are some days that you feel like it. And this ain't for the deep. This part right here for the deep. Because every day you don't feel like it. Lord have mercy. I don't always feel like it. But it ain't about what you feel like doing. It's what you got to do. Amen. If you say you're saved, amen, it's not your thing. You got to do it God's way or no way. Uh, yeah, so there are some days that we don't feel like doing it as much. There are some times, I'm talking about me, where I have blown it. If that's the Sims, I'm talking about big time. Mm -hmm. Messed up. Uh -huh. Big time. Mm -hmm. There are some days where I got it, and I know exactly what I'm talking about. That's right, that's right, that's right. But then there are some days that I don't really feel like even leaving the house. <laughs> okay. Uh, because you, sometimes you don't want to deal with nobody. Okay. Uh, there are some days, uh, trust me, God, that I mess up. There are some issues that I'm still struggling with. There are some stuff I wish I didn't have to look at. The fact of the matter is, I realize that in order for me to live this life, I need the Holy Spirit to help me to live right every day. Because you can't make it in this world unless you got some power. Going to live a holy life, your life must be concentrated on worship. Paul says it here in verse 1. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. You see those commas there? This is not a run on sentence. He did not put a period meaning stop. He said, this is a continuous thing. Holy, acceptable, not unto yourself and your friends, but unto God. See, some of the stuff we're doing is acceptable to folks in the group chat, but it ain't unacceptable unto God. I ain't gonna get to the amen, but I only got some in my pocket here. Uh, so he says, uh, which is your reasonable service? We are totally yielded to the Lord. That is the highest level of worship that we can give. Nothing says, I love you, Lord, like a consecrated, dedicated, and holy life. It does not matter how much noise you come in here and make if you're not going to be yielded to him on Wednesday night. Lord have <laughs> Okay. Uh, it does not matter how much noise you come in here and make when you cannot be yielded to him at the parking lot at Walmart, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Home Dogs, or whatever. You got to take this thing everywhere you go. Uh, you are not all that you say you are. You don't take this thing everywhere you go. If you are not sold out to him, if you are not all in with him, you will not be able to live a holy life in which the Lord is satisfied. It's about worship. Paul says this, therefore, meaning in light of what he has done for us in chapters 1 uh, through 11, our response should be to worship. Therefore, since he saved me, Therefore, since he brought me with a price. Therefore, since he laid down his life for me. Therefore, since he shed his blood just for me. Therefore, somebody got it. Since he came all the way from heaven to be the propitiation for my sins. Therefore, since he did all of that, and I'm just as hateful, mean, and ugly, and contrary, sometimes I don't even like my own self, I ought to do something for him. Since he fought, since he did all of that, the question is, what have you done for him lately? 
Lord have mercy. The only time some of us call on him is when somebody gets sick. The only time that some of, some of us call on him is when we get in the jail. But honey, you got to learn how to call him up in the good times as much as you do in the bad times. Yeah. Glory to God. Woo! Uh, therefore, Paul says, in light of what you saw in chapters 1 through 11, therefore, Seeing that God has done all of this, now it's time for you to get up and have some get up and go about yourself. Mm, listen, let me tell you something. Worship is not just for Facebook Live or YouTube on Sundays. But every day is a day of worship. And let me say this, I've said it before, I'm saying it again. I don't mean this in a pious or disrespectful way, but we don't come in here to look cute and sit in. We come in here to praise the night. We come in here to praise the name of the Lord. And every act of worship is in your every act of living. Going to work on time is an act of worship. Yeah. <laughs> Used to wonder why did my granddaddy get up so early to be at work an hour later? Because worship is for getting to work on time is an act of worship. Some of us have got so, oh Lord, let me go there. Some of us have got so that we can't even roll out the bed on time. Hey, okay, uh, uh, talk back to me if you can. Providing for your family is an act of worship. Uh huh. Taking care of a sick parent is an act of worship. Leaving work when they told you you're supposed to leave is an act of worship. Leaving without stealing the ink pens is an act of worship. <laughs> Being kind to your neighbors is an act of worship. Keeping your body healthy is an act of worship. Keeping your, I didn't hear no amens on that. Keeping your house and your yard clean is an act of worship. We don't have a second, no, we don't have a secular and sacred life. Uh, bro, Nick, you're not going to go down, so you may not know nothing about this. Then again, since you're from uh, Holly Springs, and you got some folks in West. Holly Springs, yeah. you might know somebody. Anybody in here uh, that's listening to me that's off of the age of 30, you remember when you had two sets of clothes? Yeah. Yeah. You had your yeah. <laughs> school clothes. Yeah. Well, really, we had three sets. Because you had school clothes, you had church clothes, and you had play clothes. Yeah. And you didn't play in church or school clothes. You came home and took your clothes out. Then you put on something else. And again, you went outside and played. <laughs> All right, so, so growing up, uh, we had uh, three sets of clothes. We had clothes we wore on Sunday morning. We had clothes that we wore when we got out of school. And then we had clothes that we wore when we went to school. Okay, uh, but as it is in the natural, it's not always the spiritual because there is no such thing or such life for the believer. Because when I get home, and take my necktie off, I still must worship. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I still have to yield and render unto him some reasonable service. Just because you got home, took off the stockings, took off the shoes, took off the jacket, don't mean you can live any kind of way. Honey, the clothes don't make you in the first place, but you made the clothes. You don't have that luxury. So now here, here's the challenge. The challenge is to constantly yield our bodies as a get this living sacrifice. The word sacrifice is unfamiliar to so many people because so many are following now strange gospels, which are false gospels. People, uh, because there's really only one true gospel. But these, but these strange gospels are centered around what people want. What people 
need. And it's all about them. God does not stay up all night long deciding to give us what we want. Our wants must take the back burner because guess what? God owns you. I know you didn't like that, but that's what helped me here on this one. Your wants must take the back burner because you don't own God, God owns you. If we call ourselves Christians, and since he owns us, he decides what's best for us. So in order to present myself as a living, a living sacrifice, I have to die to my desires. That's not popular. That won't get you a whole lot of dinner invites. That won't pack out a church. Because now when you start talking about accountability, everybody wants to run like roaches in the life. But honey, if you're going to live a holy life, you got to be accountable to God and to be accountable to somebody else. I wish somebody would help me in this house. And then God is calling for us to live a holy life, a clean life. Life, a pure life, but now we're falling out the strange gospels which have become modern day cults. Because now we go, let me slow down, let me preach this thing, amen, until I feel better. Amen. Uh, now we follow these strange places and, and they become modern day cults. And if you thought that when Jim Jones died, that was the last uh, ounce of Kool Aid that you saw, but you got people that are following cults nowadays. But now when you preach the word, now when you tell folks the truth, they get mad and they walk out. But honey, you got the answer to God for everything that you say. You got the answer to God for everything that you do. And he's calling us to be living sacrifices. So in order to present myself as a living sacrifice, I've got to die to what I want to do. That's not popular. Why? Because sacrifices are costly. Yeah, yeah. Sacrifices woo, are painful. You won't be invited or received warmly when you really decide to live a holy life. Because it'll cause you to cut some people out of your circle. Mm -hmm. Don't take the friends you got now or the friends you're going to have all your life. Because sometimes you outgrow people. That don't mean you better than them. That means you got a new agenda. I, I wish somebody would help me in this house. And let me just pause here parenthetically and tell somebody, get off of Facebook and, and learn how to get your face in this book. And when you learn how to get your face in this book and get off of Facebook, you can live a holy life. Yeah. Well, realize that if you want to live a holy life, you have to die to yourself. Yeah. Who are you talking to, Brother Carr? I'm talking to, Lord have mercy, those young adults. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. And those, uh -huh, uh, those not so young adults yeah. that are trying to find themselves. Uh -huh. Let me tell you something. If you ain't found yourself by the time you turn 33, quit looking. Lord have mercy. Let me tell you, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. But by the time you start having children, it's time for you to stop looking for yourself and start looking at your children. And some people can't take care of their children because they still try to find themselves. Now it's time for you to flip the script. And then you 34, 54, 64, I'm still trying to find myself. That ain't nothing but the tactic of the devil. When you Older. When you get older, silly rabbit tricks are still for kids. You got to put that stuff to the side. Oh, Lord have mercy. Uh, any man be in Christ, he's a little creature. So when you get older, it's time for you to invest in somebody else. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your goodness, reasonable. Service. It's the least that you ooh, shot, that's the least that you can do. Listen, I know, I know what it is to live. And I'm gonna 
Pause here. Parenthetically, let me just tell you something. I know what it is how to live and be a young adult and try to be saved. Because now we got this false doctrine. You better let me say this to me. You better say to what people, I'm young so I can't live. You can live right if you want to live right. But you got to give the Lord something to work with. Uh, yeah, uh, so, so, uh, I was 21 for 12 months. Listen here to my testimony. I heard a pastor say it and I realized it was a reality for me too. Most of the sin that I did, Zion and Zayden, uh huh, I'm trying to help y'all get that. That most of the sin that I did was in the church. Okay, let me, okay, pause one second. I'm gonna stop the car, but I'm gonna keep it running and the heat on because it's cold outside. All right, most of the sinning that I did mm -hmm, was in the church. Let me break this down into low gear. Mm -hmm. Because see, I joined the youth choir when I was four. I started preaching when I was 18. And then I got ordained when I was 23. So I was still wet behind the ears. I still had some immature ways about myself. I was still young and foolish. And guess what? I was preaching the gospel. So you can't tell me about the struggle of trying to live right and go to church every Sunday. Why? Because I've been through that. And let me tell you, if God can bring me through that, he can bring y'all through it too. Oh, I was going to hit me in this house. Amen. I called them out because they're here. Amen. I, uh, but I'm talking to you at home as well. Amen. We ought to stop giving God sorry excuses. And in 2021, as to why you can't do it, now is the time for you to do it. And the fact of the matter is, some people don't do and can't do because they don't want to do. I've been through, I've been through that. And then we, we are charged to help pull somebody along the way. So y'all brothers, stay encouraged. Y'all stay with the Lord. And when you mess up, don't let nobody throw it in your face. Don't let nobody, I, I'm trying to help you on today. Don't let nobody ever tell you what God can and cannot do through you. But you got to know him for yourself. And if God can use somebody like me, God knows I know he can use y'all too. Let the church say amen. You ought to say amen because you got some children that age. You ought to say amen because you got some nieces and nephews that age. You ought to say amen because you got some cousins that age. I wish somebody would help you when you realize that when you stay with God, he'll carry you through. Let me tell you something. I sympathize. Ooh, tell me. Uh, I sympathize with you and your struggle. But I cannot feel sorry for the younger group because I'm trying to give you some godly advice. And if you ever want to grow up in God, you got to learn how to listen to somebody. And that's why you got grown children. I said that. You got grown children. I mean, you, Lord Jesus, you got an AARP card and you still cut up because we got grown children in the house of God. But honey, you got to learn how to put stuff to the side. Because when you realize that you got a God to glorify, you learn how to put yourself on the back burner for the call of Christ. You don't have to make the same mistakes that others made. You can turn around if you take my advice. If you're going to live godly, in Christ Jesus. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to suffer some persecution. Yes, sir. And I'll never forget when I did my new sermon uh, back in 2005, uh, 2006, excuse me. I, I thought it was Hallelujah Boulevard. That's when God just cut some folks, slam off. I mean, you know, I wasn't popular like that, but I did again. I was kind of, you know, uh, folks knew who I was and I knew who they were. Mm -hmm. You ought to say amen, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, so, nonetheless, uh, I, after I started preaching, see, like, uh, some of the friends I had just took a hike. And then I found myself like, I ain't got but a few. And God helped me understand that, God, I had to cut some folks off. Because if I don't cut them off, you too immature to see the difference between good and bad. So I'm going to cut them off for you so you can do what I called you to do. Because I ain't called you to sit at home on a couch lifting up your lazy legs. I ain't called you to, Lord, have mercy. 
says, I call you to be responsible. Amen. If you're a man, don't be giving up no woman. Amen. You got to get up, Lord Jesus. Let me drop it like a fool. If you're a man, get up and find you a job. I mean, Walmart is hiring. All these is hiring. Can't Lord, they don't have a business. Target is hiring. And folks don't want to work a job. You got to get up and do something. But now, living in a society where Lord have mercy uh, uh, where we're in reversal because the Bible says that he that findeth a wife Woo, Shana, that findeth a wife let me tell you something ladies if you want a man you got to go somewhere and hide stay out that man's face stop texting him all the time let him text you I was somebody with him in his house you texting all me with you still got to the point where you texting him good morning and good night and that's what he's supposed to be doing to you in my manuscript. We ain't tearing up nobody's houses. I'm trying to help you before you walk down that aisle and make that dead mistake. You said, I got this honey, a piece of paper ain't gonna keep nobody together. But if you got the love of Jesus, if you got a made up mind, you can make it. So, 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 if you take my advice, you can turn around and go the other way. Because the struggle the struggle is really real. Uh-huh. I don't know. I don't know when. I don't know when I'll ever arrive at the age where I will no longer have issues. Ooh, you caught that. I get to Let me say it again. I don't know when I'll ever arrive at the age where I stop having issues. Mm -hmm. Where I no longer have issues. Because even when there are some things mm -hmm, that we can no longer do, mm -hmm, that does not mean that the thought won't enter your mind. <laughs> Ooh, child, I'm, pe I'm preaching better than y'all respond. Just because you say, just because you sanctify, just because you name the name of Christ does not mean that the devil won't try to bring that thought to your mind. But you gotta learn how to Pull, woo, pull it down. Uh, thank God for grace. Thank God for mercy. Uh huh. He looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. I'm not talking right now to you spiritual people. I'm talking to somebody who knows that if the Lord didn't help you, you and I both will be in Wake County Jail right now. Lord have mercy. Don't act like you've been saved and sanctimonious all your life. And if somebody catch you on the right, wrong day, uh -huh. mm -hmm. if the Lord didn't keep his hand, I wish I had a witness. If I'm talking about you, you ought to holler back at me. Uh -huh. If the Lord didn't keep his hand on you, you would be the biggest fool in Apex, Holly Springs, Raleigh, Duquesne, and Chapel Hill. But some of y'all thank God for his grace. Is anybody glad about the grace of God? That even when I messed up, that even when I acted a fool, God didn't expose me. Because some folks did what I did, and they got exposed. But God covered me up. And I wonder if there's anybody here that's glad about the grace of God. Is there anybody here that realized it takes grace? I got to do a part two. So Y'all help me close right now. It takes grace to make it through this thing called life. And this is Part one, we'll do part two next week because God knows I got to get out of here. But is there anybody here that realizes it takes a do right mind? Hallelujah, God. If you want to live a holy life, if you want to live a clean life, you got to turn from some stuff I heard. I heard.
you're not saved. You don't know who Jesus is. The time is out. Yes, yes, yes. We're playing with God. The time is out. We're playing with your soul. Because your soul's got to go somewhere. When breath exits your body, the soul has to take residence somewhere. And all, although we sing the song that is true, it's bright side. It is a bright side. Somewhere. The fact of the matter is, the only way we're going to make it is we got to be holy. Yes, yes, yes. I don't care if you see or me, AME, Church of Christ, Baptist or Methodist, Presbyterian or Lutheran, we all got to be holy. Holy, holy. Woo! We all got to be holy. We got away from preaching wholeness because when we preach wholeness, people walk out. Because you hold them accountable. I don't care who you are. If you say that you say, you got to live holy. Let's get a Lord in here. We invite you to join us. Amen. If you're not saved, you want to send correspondence. You want to be a part of this ministry and what the Lord is doing here. Send correspondence to us. We're not a perfect church, but we're serving a risen Savior in this world today. I don't know about you, but I know He lives. Okay, I heard one of you. I know He lives. You see what I brought you from? You will see what I can take you through! 